ownership and control of the stock market seems to be distributed over a large number of people, right? Wrong. In a major study published last week, econophysicists have identified the world's most powerful companies based on their ability to control stock markets around the globe. This amazing study confirms a lot of common suspicions. When it comes to complex networks, it's relatively straightforward to draw a web, put down a bunch of nodes, and show how they're connected. However, this this old analyzation method shows you nothing about the way shares are bought and sold and how ownership changes between the nodes over time. Another important variable is the market capitalization of the companies, how big the companies are. This was previously left out and has a good effect on the dynamics of the system. But James Glattfelder and Stefano Bottensen from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich have put these variables together in a model describing the control and ownership of stock markets in 48 countries around the world. Their results are startling. As it turns out, the supposed insight gained from drawing a bunch of nodes and connecting them all is entirely misleading. When other factors are introduced, it turns out that stock markets are actually owned by a very small number of companies. On page 23, table 1 shows different world markets classified by their Ada Prime value. Ada Prime is a value derived by the research found in this paper. A low value of Ada Prime signifies that the market is controlled by a very small number of companies. A high value of Ada Prime signifies that the market is controlled by a large number of companies. Interestingly, the United States and Great Britain have the lowest Ada Prime values in the world. China and Italy have the highest. Further down on page 28, they compile a list of the world's top 10 global power brokers. These are the companies that exert the most control over the global markets. It turns out that the stock markets are actually controlled by a very small number of companies. Not only that, but they have the most influence and can exert the most power out of anybody over the world economy. Are they up to the job? What is the extent to which they know this? And if monopolies destroy the free market, then why have we decided these companies are too big to fail?